click the bell icon and subscribe to our channel so that you will not miss any classes after attaching the geno power interest to the vector for example uh, consider we are taking plasmid as a vector and to this plasmid we have attached the gene of our interest here the gene of our interest is here it is attached okay and after attachment it will be sent into the vector by transformation so this dna is transferred into the host host to say for example esterase of food and here dna is invisible and whatever the process we are doing we are doing manually and uh, if, if it is not visible to us then it is very much difficult to know whether the gene of our interest is transferred successfully into the host or not whether the host is recombinant or not or transformant or not okay so if the gene of our interest is successfully transferred into the host then this host is called recombinant recombinant or we can call it as transformant transformant suppose for any reason since we are doing it manually there are errors occurring always so because of those errors if the dna is not transferred this dna is not transferred successfully then that cell is called non recombinant non recombinant or non transformant so all we need for further work is the recombinant not the non recombinant so we have to select this okay so just have a imagination don't think they work with a single cell no biotechnologists will not work with a single cell they will be working with many cells at a time so among the many cells few will be successfully transferred with the target dna and few will may not be transferred so the next step after attaching the dna with the vector and transferring is to select the recombinants from non recombinants we have to eliminate the non recombinants and we have to select only the recombinants so for this the selectable markers will be helpful so we shall study now in detail how to select the recombinants and what are the methods available for selecting the recombinants under the heading selection of selection of recombinants selection of recombinants so here so there are two methods available depending upon the type of selectable marker genes we are using i told the previous class that there are two genes available for uh, uh, selecting the recombinants one is antibiotic resistance genes either we may use antibiotic resistant genes or we may, we may use enzyme producing genes enzyme producing genes so we shall discuss now how we can select the recombinants when we are using antibiotic resistant genes as a selectable markers suppose i take example of tdr322 vector so here as we discussed earlier it is having restriction sites on selectable marker genes ampicillin 
resistant chain here it is tetracycline resistant chain and here is the cloning site so here it is possible to attach the chain of our interest bam h1 is here bam h1 so i'll take only one uh, uh, enzyme so that it will not make a mess and here is the chain of our interest right different color so here is the gene of our interest. So we have took the vector and we treated with the restriction enzyme and there is a cut made here and this gene of your interest or we can call it as target DNA. This target DNA is successfully ligated here. Okay. And after ligation this vector is transferred into the host and we are not sure whether this cell or this uh, vector is transferred here or not okay so for that what they will make is they plate they first they prepare a media having two antibiotics so we are taking an example of tbr322 right so on that there is presence of two resistant genes, ampicillin and tetracycline. That means the cell uh, which receives this uh, vector will have the resistant uh, to ampicillin but not tetracycline. Why? Because we have inserted the target DNA on tetracycline resistant gene. That is it is cut at the middle so that it will lose its property. This gene is get inactivated. If gene of our interest or the vector is successfully transferred into this medium, then the observation should be one media is prepared by adding ampicillin antibiotic. Okay, they will prepare a media by adding ampicillin antibiotic. And other media they have prepared by tetracycline by adding tetracycline antibiotic okay so here we don't know whether it is a transformant or not then we will come to know if it is a transformant that is if it is successfully having this vector then it should grow only on the medium having ampicillin and it will not grow here it will only grow here because it will it has lost if it is a successful recombinant it has lost the capacity of resisting tetracycline but it has not lost the capacity to resist ampicillin so this is how they can sell suppose if it grow on both what happens then it indicates it is not a transformant, it is a non transparent So this is one criteria. But this uh, method is uh, considered to be somewhat messy because of uh, past mutation. Uh, since uh, the bacteria are unicellular organisms, they undergo mutations. So because of that, they may grow here or any other reasons the mess may happen. So to overcome that, Biotechnologists have developed an alternative selectable marker genes. Alternative selectable markers. So those selectable markers are sorry, alternative selectable markers are enzyme producing genes. So what they will do is they will attach the enzyme producing gene. Commonly used enzyme producing gene is LACZ. Commonly used enzyme producing gene as a selectable marker is LACZ. So here they will uh, attach the LACZ gene here to the vector. And on LACZ there is a presence of restriction site. And here on the LACZ the restriction site, the gene of target gene will be cloned or it will be ligated. 
So basically, the lag Z gene is responsible for producing an enzyme called beta galactosidase. Beta galactosidase enzyme. And this beta galactosidase enzyme is capable of breaking down the substrate, the substrate for X gal. X gal is a substrate for beta galactosidase. So when the beta galactosidase act upon the X gal, then the bacterial cells can digest the X gal and it will be converted into some other product. And those products will be having blue color. Blue colored product is obtained. Okay, this is the basic thing which happens. Okay, so here when the target gene is transferred into lag Z, then the property of lag Z will be lost. That is, lag Z is get inactivated, and that process is called insertional. Insertional inactivation because of insertion of target gene DNA, the gene is get inactivated. That is, lag Z gene is inactivated. Inactivation means it cannot produce beta galactosidase. If it is not producing beta galactosidase, then blue color product is not produced. Okay. So now let us consider from here. So we have transferred successfully or we have cloned successfully the gene of our interest on lag Z and we have transferred it into the host and we don't know whether it is a transformate or not and for that what they will do they will prepare a medium by adding a substrate X gap okay and again the thing you should know they will be working with the multiple cells. And among the multiple cells, some will be recombinants and some will be non recombinants. So, we have to select the recombinants. So, here on this medium, they will transfer the work cells, that is, host cells. If the host cells are having the gene of our interest, then those cells will not produce the beta galactosidase so they will not uptake the X gal blue colored product is not formed blue colored product is not formed means those cells which are recombinants will grow as a white colored colony okay they will grow as a white colored colony and those cells which are not having an insert that is gene of our interest then they will lose a property Sorry, they will not lose a property. Those who are not having an insert, the X gal is not inactivated. It will be in an active condition. It will produce the beta galactosidase and convert the X gal into blue color product. So those cells will form a blue color colonies. Next. So by differentiating the color compared to here. The differentiation of color is very important, sorry, very easier. So, those blue colored colonies which are formed are of recombinants. So, which can be used for further. And those which are formed, the blue colored colonies are considered to be non recombinants. So, this is how it is very much easy to differentiate recombinants from the non recombinants. Okay. So, the further things like uh, the other vectors which are used in recombinant DNA technology, we shall continue in the next class.